Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're creating a 3D text effect just like the one you see on the screen in Photoshop. Now this is using a Design Cuts asset. We're using the Blessed Script font, but you can use any font that you wish. And it doesn't have to be a script font. This effect works with pretty much any font. To get started, I'm going to create a new file. So I'll choose File and then New. If you've never worked with Photoshop's 3D tools before, and so if you're doing a bit of experimenting, then do yourself a favor and select a smallish size document because part of the 3D effect requires you to render the effect at the end, and that can take a lot of time with a large document. My document is 1000 by 700 pixels in size. That's a pretty good size. I'm going to the Type tool. I have my Blessed Script font selected already. My font size is about 200. That's probably going to work just fine here. I'm going to type my text and it's Dream Big. Now I've got centering on. That's why my text is going backwards off the artboard. So I'm just going to move it into position. Because I've typed this text previously, some of the settings for the text are already in place. So if I go to the character panel, you'll see that the height of the lines, the leading, is set quite small, 140 relative to the font size, which is 200. And that's bringing the second line of text a little bit closer to the first. Now this particular font has some glyphs in it which are a little more interesting than the type that we're seeing on the screen. So I'm choosing Window and then Glyphs to get access to these. So I'm going to the letter M, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to find an alternate letter M. I'm going to take this one so I'll double click on it. Well that was a bit enthusiastic. So let's go to the letter B because I want to replace that as well. And I'll just scroll up in the Glyphs panel here to find a different letter B. I'm going to choose that one and I'll also change out my G. When you're working with a font that has glyphs in it, you might be able to get more interesting characters by finding replacement characters in the glyph set. So my type is formatted here with a pale grey colour. If yours is another colour, you can just select over it, double click the colour up here and choose something that is fairly pale. This is a good colour grey, so I'm just going to leave it at that. If I open up the Layers panel, you'll see that we have a background layer and our type layer. So to go to the 3D tools, we're going to right click on our type layer and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Now that's also available from this 3D menu. So you could go up and select the 3D menu and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer here. They're the exact same feature, just two different ways to get to it. Now when you select to create this 3D object, you may see a prompt that you're about to create a 3D layer and would you like to switch to the 3D workspace? Well, yes you do, so click yes. If you don't see the 3D workspace appear, you can always get to it from this little icon up here and you'll just click here on 3D. And then if you've been in here and messed around with a little bit, you might need to re-click on this and choose Reset 3D and that will reset it to the original value. So you should end up with a Properties panel and a 3D panel and you also have access to your Layers panel. Now there are a lot of things going on in this 3D workspace and it can be a little bit confusing. But basically what you're looking at here is your text in 3D space and it's casting a shadow here on the ground plane. This thing that's got a sort of grid over it is the ground plane. Now you should also have a little viewer up here. If you don't see it, go to View and then make sure that Extras is selected and click Show. And what you're looking for is the 3D secondary view. That will help you. This is the 3D ground plane, so I've got that turned on and I have 3D lights as well. If we have a look up in this extra view, you'll see that we're having a look from the top down. So what we're seeing is the top of this text. Now the way that the text is positioned, it's throwing its shadow on the ground plane. So it's like having these letters as sort of solid objects and they're sitting on a bench. And so the shadow that they're going to throw is on the bench. But in the example that you saw earlier, the shadow is behind the text itself. Well, this is how we're going to achieve it today. There are a lot of ways of doing it, but this is the one that we're going to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll this text over so it lies flat on the ground. 
and then it's going to cast its shadows on the ground in a way that's going to be the way that we want it to. So the easiest thing to do is to go to the 3D area and locate your text. So there's a text layer here. You can also choose infinite light and current view and so on, but you want the type itself. So you're going to click on that. And you're going to come up here in the properties panel to this icon here, which are your coordinates. And you'll click on that to view your coordinates. And what you're going to do is to change this rotation and you'll type 90 in to the X value. That's all you need to do. And now in the preview from the top down, when you're looking over the top of the type, you're actually reading the type. And from the position that we're looking at the type in, well, we're looking at the bottom of it. So what we need to do is a couple of things. Firstly, we've got a really big extrusion on this type. The type is really, really deep. So we're going to change that. So making sure that you've got the type selected down here in the 3D panel. You'll come up here to the first of the options in the properties panel. And there's a slider here for extrusion depth. And we're just going to wind the slider back. Don't get too enthusiastic because it's possible to actually reverse it and go back out the other way. So I'm just going to drop this to about 90, 95, something like that. The result of changing this extrusion depth is that the text is now floating well above the surface. It's way above the ground plane. Well, there's an easy way to move it down to the ground plane that doesn't require you to use the mouse because things can go pretty crazy in this dialogue if you're not 100% sure what you're doing. So what we're going to do is again, make sure that our text is selected in the 3D panel here. We're going back up to coordinates and we're going to click here on move to ground. And when we do that, the text jumps back down onto the ground plane. So right now we're looking at the bottom of the text. This is what it would look like from the top down. So what we need to do is to rotate the camera. In 3D in Photoshop, you can change your view of an object. And when you change a view of an object, you see it in a different way. And what we want to do is to see it from the top down. We want this view to be our view. Well, the way we do it is to roll a camera. So we're going to select current view and you can see that current view has a little camera icon beside it. That's telling you that that is the camera. And then you're going to click here on this icon, which is orbit the 3D camera. So click on that and you're ready to orbit the camera. You're going to click somewhere outside of the text. You don't want to go anywhere near the text. So you're going to start up about here and you're going to click and drag downwards. And as you do, you're rotating the camera so that you, now you're viewing the text from above it. Now, don't worry if things go haywire. Just try and roll it as accurately as you can and then just let go because we can finesse it using the coordinates. So we've got current view selected and we've got our coordinates selected up here. If not, you can just click on coordinates. What you're going to do with this middle set is you're going to set the X value to the same 90 degrees that we used previously to roll our text. And then the other values are just going to be zero. And when you do that, the text is flattened out. And so we're effectively standing above sort of a table, if you like, that's the ground plane, and we've got some dimensional text sitting on top of it. Next, we need to look at the shadows because at the moment, the light is coming from down here. I can tell it's coming from down here because this is the infinite light. Every single scene in Photoshop 3D will have an infinite light. Think of it as the sun. Now you can't move the sun, so you can't move this infinite light, but you can change the direction of it and you can change the softness of it. So we've got really hard shadows right now and the direction is sort of from the bottom up. That's not working for me. So over here in the 3D panel, locate the infinite light. And when you click on infinite light, you get this sort of widget appear. And you use the widget to control the light. So we're just going to grab its little handle here and spin it around. And as we spin it around, we're changing how the light falls on our object. And so we're looking for something that is going to work for us. So I don't want too deep a shadow, although I could throw a really deep shadow. So I could create a really deep flat shadow if I wanted to, but I'm going to bring it up a little bit more so that we've just got a very subtle shadow. Also in the infinite light settings, apart from just adjusting the light so that the shadows are cast where you want them to be cast, you can also soften the light. So with the infinite light selected, you'll come up here in the properties panel and select this first icon, which is the infinite light icon. 
Here you can turn the shadow on and off. Well, of course, we want the shadow because that's the effect that we're looking for. But you can also soften it. So I'm just going to wind up the softness of the shadow a little bit. Now, before I go, I think that my text could be a little bit larger. So let's go back to the text. I'm just going to select the text here. And this last icon is Scale the 3D Object. So I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to hover over the type and I'm going to pull up. If I pull up, I'm going to make it bigger. If I pull down, I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm just going to make it bigger so it pretty much fills the document. So now we've created our type effect, we're ready to render it. There are a couple of things here to consider. The first thing is that you're well advised to save the document at this stage because if it fails in the rendering for some reason, you're still going to have the effect applied that you can then go and render it again later on. The second thing is that there's some rendering settings and you need to be aware of those and make good choices for them. So I'm going to edit and then preferences and then 3D. On a Mac, that would be Photoshop Preferences 3D. And here are the settings that you have. You've got a high quality threshold, you've got a shadow quality, and you've got a render tile size. I'm gonna set my render tile size right now to medium. I'm gonna set the high quality threshold to a lowish sort of value, five or six. And then the shadow quality, I'm going to set to high because I want this to render pretty quickly. If I wanted a really, really high quality render, then I would set shadow quality to very high. I would set my high quality threshold up to a really high value, probably nine, eight or nine would do. And I'd set my render tile size to small. The implications of those settings is that the render is going to take a long time. And depending on what sort of power your computer has got and how many of your CPU cycles you can give to this process, it could take hours. And so that's why we start with a sort of smaller set of values, not so much quality, because we don't want to be spending hours on something that we might look at once it's rendered and say, you know, we could have made some changes to that. So I'm going to choose a sort of mid-range set of values here and click OK. I'm going to save my file. Now before I render, you can see that the shadows are going to be pretty tight into these letters and they're not extending very far past the letters. Well, the render is going to take place over the whole of the artboard. So I can speed up the rendering a little bit, particularly in the first render, by selecting the area I want to render out. So I'm clicking on the rectangular marquee tool here and I'm just going to drag over the area where I think the shadows are going to appear. And I've removed probably something like 20% of the artboard from this selection. And by doing that, the rendering is only going to take place in this area and that's going to speed it up. And particularly if you've got a large artboard and a small piece of text, you will want to just select the area that you need to render to speed things up. So I've got my render area selected. I've got my preferences set. I've saved my file in case I encounter some problems with the rendering process. So now I'm ready to render. There's an icon for rendering at the foot of the properties panel. There's also one down here at the foot of the 3D panel. You can click any of them. So I'm gonna to click to start rendering. As I do that, you'll see a blue box appear over the render area, and that's just showing me the area that's being rendered at the current time. And as the rendering is underway, you'll see an indicator down here in the bottom left corner that will tell you how much time is remaining for the render and how far through it you are. Now, I chose a pretty fast render. It's still going to take something like nine or 10 minutes to render this file, at least according to the timing in the bottom corner here. And I found that that's pretty reliable. So I'm gonna stop the videoing and we're gonna come back when the rendering is complete. So my quick render is now complete. There are a few things that you can do to speed up the process and help your computer. One of them is to restart the computer before you do the rendering and make sure that you close down any applications that are open and that you don't need. The other thing on a Windows machine is you can press Control, Shift and Escape to get to the Windows Task Manager. You can then locate the Photoshop application and that's this here. 
If I right click on it and choose to set priority, I can give it high priority, which is going to give it better access to the CPU. You won't be able to set it to the highest, which is real time, but you can set it to a higher priority than it currently has. Now that the rendering is complete, I can go back to the Layers panel and here is my 3D object. Now if I want to make further changes to it, the better way of doing that is to right click on this and convert it to a smart object. That way you're embedding the smart object, the 3D, into the file. You can go ahead and make some changes to the object in the main document so you can move it around, for example. But if you need to re-render it or make edits to the actual 3D, you're going to double click on the little icon here, the smart object icon, to open it. And then this is your smart object and so you could go ahead and make changes to this and re-render it. Once it's been re-rendered, you'll just close it. So click on the close option and you'll be prompted to save it and you'll say yes to saving it. You're saving it inside this file. Now if the effect is a little bit dark for you, this is what I do. Firstly, you want to turn off this selection. So that's Control or Command D, just to deselect the selection. And then you'll apply an adjustment layer. So choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer. And I'll select Curves. Click OK. A Curves adjustment will allow me to adjust the darkness of the shadow. So I'm going to pull up on the curves. I'm just going to drag upwards on it. And as I do, the shadows become lighter. And then I can pull down on the top end of the curve a little bit if I wish. So the look that this is giving me is turning it from this into this. But of course, it would be much better if I rendered the entire document and took it through to a high quality render because that will get rid of the noise behind the image. So there is quite a lot of noise in here and that's because I did a lower quality render. And this is the render that you saw earlier in this video and it took just under two hours to complete. It was a relatively high quality render but had I chosen the really high quality settings it would have taken over eight hours. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop 3D techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.